Um, I have a video of Michael Irving that was... Oh, shit. That hurt. <laughs> Damn. Here we go. Fucking win. Ow. Well, good thirsty Thursday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course. Joe Boo is back at the Red Brick House, but we got Joe Beer here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods. Hope everybody is having a great week. This week is is the most critical from right now i'm gonna say this is the most critical week for the dallas cowboys to get their shit together no joke if the cowboys don't let me rephrase this the cowboys this is the last opportunity to improve the team and set the tone for the rest of the year what we have here is we've got the constellation preseason game to make final decisions on who should stay and who should go with the Dallas Cowboys. We have some players here. You look at the competition at wide receiver, and we might really need those guys um, if CeeDee Lamb's deal does not get um, done. We don't want a situation where we end up letting a guy and he becomes Danny Amendola like we did back in 2007. We really have to evaluate these guys and get the true best 53 players on this roster. You are going to need them. And we got a hellacious scare yesterday because right now the problem for the Cowboys is we have some really good, great frontline players. And this has been the problem for the Cowboys forever. The Cowboys always have a very top-heavy roster. But the problem is, is once you get through that first layer, you're stepping down and you don't necessarily have the players to fill in to be anywhere close to the same. And yesterday, you know, we're, we're relying on two rookies potentially to be starters on our offensive line, Cooper Beebe and Tyler Guyton. Tyler Guyton has been looking like a beast, you know, literally – we have Cooper Beebe looking like the juggernaut. He is literally just knocking people around, okay? I hope people, you know, that that, that one catches on. Cooper Beebe, the juggernaut. <sighs> Thing was, yesterday, Tyler Guyton left practice early with a sore knee. Now, he's going to be fine and all that. But if that didn't send a shockwave, because literally, I'm just like, no, when I heard it. If that doesn't send shockwaves and make you realize how fragile our situation is, we let go Tyron Smith, who, you know, was in the twilight of his career and things like that. You get a stud in the draft who's a rookie who still has a lot to learn, but you're getting on the bandwagon for him. And then all of a sudden, he, you worry about him not being there. This should be a foreshadowing or a forewarning for the Cowboys to understand we need to have depth on the roster and not only is it that we cut our guys that's also that chance that last window where there's going to be players out there in mass that you can get that may be able to help your roster and this is where teams look and say you know what this rookie guy or this other free agent signing guy they're really really good and they're better than what we thought and we can let go of a uh, Jordan Phillips. You know, that's what happened with the Giants. They looked and they said, we are ass ass. We're going to be a team that's rebuilding and we're going to need to be looking at this window down the road. So what we need to do right now is uh, having a guy like Jordan Phillips, who's an older guy, by the time we're good, he's going to be done. So let's see if we can get something for him and go. So that's where that move helps the Cowboys, which look to say we're a better team that may be challenging. We need some bump right now for the short term. And that's where basically you're going to have this pool of all of these guys out there that you can pick and choose some of these guys. And you're going to lose some of the ones that you're hoping to bring back. It's critical to get those guys that you really need. And it's not easy 
where you try and say, you know what, I'll put this guy on cuts and we'll bring him back because we don't think anybody's going to get him and somebody gets him. Somebody like a John Ridgway. And he becomes a productive starter for the commanders. And you don't want to have that situation. The other part of this is, to me, you need to have C.D. Lamb's deal done by Tuesday. You need to have him in here so he can get those two weeks of work in before this game. That's when you really need to do this before it really starts to hurt the team. And we went into a season two years ago where we were looking and saying Michael Gallup might be ready for game one. And he wasn't. He wasn't ready. Really wasn't ready the whole season. And we saw how bad the offense was that first week against Tampa Bay. We don't want to start that. We have a killer schedule early on, and we need to set the tone. We don't want to be like Philly 500 said, starting out two and five. Now, I will say this. I can't guarantee you that Linville Joseph has a lot left in the tank. I can't guarantee you that Jordan Phillips has a lot left in the tank. I can't guarantee you that um, Carl Lawson has a lot in the tank. But what I will say is the Cowboys are better than just about anybody else at finding talent, developing talent, and so on. They found so many diamonds in the rough, guys that people looked at and said, uh, meh, you know. Uh, he, he he's a bum. In fact, our own fan base, why are we signing that guy? He's a bum. I hope that what we get with Linvel Joseph and Jordan Phillips is some real good beef in the middle that we don't have a Don Terry Poe, a guy just looking to get a check. But if you look at one of the biggest problems we had last year in the playoffs and even through every single game that we played a team be it the San Francisco 49ers be it the Miami Dolphins be it Detroit Lions be it the Buffalo Bills is stopping the run and Mike Zimmer I don't know that the defense will be great but I'm gonna say they're gonna stop the run they are going to stop the run and I look at this and I say bro Without the Cowboys doing what everybody told them that they should do, signing one big player early in free agency, as Stephen Jones says, you know, when you, when you go into free agency and you, you're paying great money for an average guy, it's because you messed up in the draft. Now, we'll see how these guys work. See how they work. You know, when you think about Carl Lawson, Jordan Phillips, and Linval Joseph, you're talking about $5 million a year. For, for one year. They're rentals. Are they, would it have been better off spending $10 million on one guy? That remains to be seen. But collectively, possibly, this works out. And this also, the bigger thing, because people will say, this says a lot about Mozzie Smith. Understand something, people. One defensive lineman isn't enough. It's not like quarterback where you say, I got a quarterback that's really good, so I'm not worried about another one. Defensive line, you need a rotation. None of these guys can hold up constantly every single play and cover two or three spots because depending on if the Cowboys playing a 3-4 or 4-3, they're going to need three defensive tackles. Mozzie can't play all three of them at the same time, people. What this is is the Dallas Cowboys will have the defensive beef formation where they can put three 300 plus pound guys in there to stuff the run. That's huge. That line will be huge. As I like to say, the fat boys are back. Now, we go through and we dissect the Dallas Cowboys failures in the playoffs. Stopping the run and running the football. Linebackers were addressed. Defensive line is being addressed. I'm not sure running back really has, although getting a better offensive line kind of addresses the running back situation. So we'll see how this all pans out. We'll see if the Cowboys are, are satisfied right now and are going to wait for cuts 
to see what's out there and put this thing together. And I hope that with today being a walkthrough and travel day, um, actually, sorry, but being a walkthrough day and then tomorrow being a travel day, that maybe this gets some time for Jerry Jones to get this deal done for CD because this is paramount. Now, here's what's crazy here this morning is listening to ESPN. Man, they're hangry. Somebody needs to get them a Snickers bar or something. They literally are fighting about the Dallas Cowboys. Listen to this this morning. We've, we've been talking about this ad nauseum, it seems like. CD is, yes, he is their passing offense. Guy with, led the league in, in catches and second in, in receiving yards last, last season. It's going to be paramount. We're running out of time here. We're running out of time. We're talking about two weeks before the regular season starts, you know, opening mm-hmm. night for the NFL. And we're we talking about C.D. Lamb, one of the most prolific wide receivers that we have in this league, still has not signed a contract. Time is running out to get him ready for week one. But it could be some good news, Jerry. said there's been productive conversations. What that means, I don't know, as we keep it with America's team. And that continued holdout of C.D. Lamb for the Dallas Cowboys as we inch closer to week one. And it might be a problem for a team that's looking to get over that playoff hump. But our Lewis Riddick sounds off on the optics of the no deal in Dallas. Mm. They developed CD. They drafted him. We know he had a thousand more receiving yards than the next closest wide receiver on their team last year. Mm. They're not going anywhere without him. And they're sending a bad message by this not getting done. I don't know what CD is asking for, but I'm telling you this. This would be pri- I would be basically like, what is this going to take? Because this, set, this sends a tone, and it sets a tone for the Dallas Cowboys. And they are sabotaging their season the longer this goes along. Dan Orlovsky, I love that buzzword, sabotage. Do you agree with Lewis that they're sabotaging the season if they don't get this deal done? Oh, of course. But they started sabotaging their season the day after they got waxed by Green Bay and did absolutely nothing. They, they've done, they, they have done nothing since at home they got absolutely destroyed by a guy who was playing in his first season as a starting quarterback mm-hmm. with a bunch of receivers that people were like, who are they? They got destroyed on both sides of the football and did nothing. This is just falling in line. This is falling in line with exactly what happened on that day, that they just think that they can just show up. What would the, what would the Dallas Mavericks be without Luka Doncic? That's my son's favorite basketball player. What would they be? Because nothing. they would be nothing without him. That's exactly what the Cowboys would be offensively without CD. The fi- if you look at like the final three months of the season, I think it's 11 games, he was getting 13 targets a game. That's 35% of their offensive snaps mm-hmm. pass game-wise. Of course they're sabotaging themselves. They already have. The season starts in 16 days, guys. <sighs> Wake it, it, up, Dallas. Wake up, Dallas. In that Jerry made that boat all in. Oh, yeah. We, or, or yeah, Oroski yeah, said they, yes. they're, they all out. They, I mean, they haven't done anything this offseason to make Cowboys fans optimistic about what's going on, D. Woody. <laughs> I mean, Dan already spoke about it where CD is literally the, he's their whole passing offense. The fact that you haven't been able to sign CD, Dak Prescott, you haven't, you haven't come to a contract with him. Michael Parsons, you haven't. If you're you, the you, 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 Mike Aiken will be the next year. Are you frustrated as a, a player not look named Look at this man's face. Locker. Of course he's frustrated. <laughs> look at, I, I look at his face. Like, if this thing shouldn't be hard. The Dallas Cowboys, if we're going to be real about it, they're one of the best teams at identifying talent and developing talent. Mm. Totally. But why aren't, you, why, why aren't you taking that next step and making sure these guys that you've developed mm-hmm. – they're there long term. What, 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 is, what is the holdup? Other teams are able to do it. Philly is able to do it. San Francisco is able to do it. I mean, all these, you know, Green Bay, Detroit. Like, look at what Detroit, the Detroit Lions have done this offseason. Mm-hmm. They've locked up all of their key players. And we're sitting here with basically two weeks left, mm-hmm. and the Dallas Cowboys, we're still having the same conversation. That when is CD do. Lamb going to get done? <laughs> like, what, what, what is Dallas doing? They're yeah. sleepwalking. You know what the Cowboys are like? Jerry Jones is like that guy that you've been dating for 10 years, and he's like, don't worry, baby. I'm going to put a ring on it. And you're like, dating okay, for 10 cool. years. Cool, cool. But you're still <laughs> waiting. You're like, where is, where is the ring? Where is it? Like, we Can somebody marry her, please? Waiting, and you just Can somebody give her? Look, look, I think it's more about Kimberly 
Somebody is like, baby, those that we want him and I, I need a ring. Him. But the guy's still not there. Um, I will say somebody should just send her a ring in the mail. I wouldn't use the word sabotaging. I feel like that's a little strong because let's say they get a deal done today. The yeah. guy's back on the practice field. Uh, you know, if he's mm -hmm. their entire offense, right, their whole passing, it, everything flows through him, then all right, it, they just hit the ground running. But to Dan's point earlier, you're waiting for the all-in moves. Right. And I don't know, Jerry and I seem to have different ideas of what all-in means, yeah. but but they did nothing in free agency. They brought back Ezekiel Elliott, who they thought a couple years ago, yeah, no, he, he's washed. That was oh, cost no, Now he's back. So I, I don't want to say they're sabotaging, though, because if you get him back in the fold, well, the season's here. The only it, question is if he gets but hurt. Here's what I want to say. Hammy early. It, here's what I want to say. What you, you know, got to say? You know who they're playing week one? Ooh, Brown. talk about Cleveland. it. Brown. Talk about it. Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Has anyone seen that defense? I have. Those boys have. are, you're talking about coming yeah. to a buzzsaw, yeah. and you don't have your 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 number one yeah. wide receiver? Yeah. Can you imagine going into Cleveland and not having CD at your, at your, at your disposal? You would Ooh. hope. You would hope that Jerry gets something done Look at Dan by the season <laughs> over. But at this point, we don't know. And we'll come back to this later. But by the way, I'm not a, a couples therapist, but if you've been dating for 10 years, Time there's other questions coach. There. Yeah. Uh, there's other <laughs> Kimberly <laughs> Martin needs a ring, man. There's questions to answer. If you've been dating, we're back on Get Up two weeks away from kick. All right. So, Kimberly Martin, she needs a ring, y'all. She needs a ring. But um, they do have some valid points. They do have some very valid points on what the Cowboys should be doing. They really do. Because you look at this and say, hmm, hmm. They are still playing around with getting C.D. Lamb there. The business hasn't stopped. The Cowboys, you know, I don't want to say trust the process. I want to say that Mike Zimmer and the Cowboys have had, oh, boy, the Cowboys, I will say, have had an epiphany that they realize that here's the reality. The Cowboys have always had a great offense since the Super Bowl. The Cowboys offense has always been one of the top offenses. But very rarely do they have a championship defense. A defense that can get you a stop when you need it. A defense that can bail you out when the offense just doesn't have it. A defense like Kansas City had when Pat Mahomes threw a bad interception that was almost in the red zone. Their defense did not give up a point. Did not give up a point on that turnover. And you can look and say, it. you know, they, they could have easily given up a field goal. They didn't give up shit. And that was the difference between them winning the Super Bowl last year and not. You can look at it and say, Trevor Lawrence has a playoff win. In a game that he threw five interceptions, five interceptions and went down 27 to nothing. Their defense put the foot in the ground and only let the Chargers score three more points, which enabled their offense to get on track and win the game. It's not just about one side of the football. Eagles last year, they had a really good offense. Was it as good as the year before? No. But their defense was ass-ass. And that's why the Eagles went downhill. You've got to be, when it comes to playoffs, it's the best of the best. And it's a different game. And the Cowboys are finally getting some beef on the defensive line and realizing sometimes you just need a fat F on the defensive line that's going to punch somebody in the mouth, that's going to be nasty, that's been there, that's not going to be intimidated. You know, in life, there's always people who get all the glory. The reason why they get the glory is because of those people, those nameless people, those workers in there, those people that are building the damn business that you cannot function without. And we ain't had great defensive play. It's funny because I was going through in my mind 
the best defensive player, defensive lineman, interior defensive lineman I can remember in recent history would actually have to be Jay Ratcliffe, who was really good for a couple of years. And that's where you looked at the Cowboys' defense around 2007. That should have been a Super Bowl team. When you think about having Demarcus Ware in his, you know, in his young days and having a, a Jay Ratcliffe who was handling the middle. But in that time, there's nobody memorable that you say, oh, my God, that, that's just been a great interior defensive lineman. We haven't had the studs in the middle. And in the same way, the Cowboys had a problem at safety. and We kept getting burnt deep some years ago. And last year, having a problem with linebackers and not being able to support the line. Now they're trying to address it. And I will say this may be, and it all it's all in paper. This may be the most complete defense that you have. Because you don't look at this and say, man, our defensive line is just awful. I'm not going to say it's great just yet. we got to see all these pieces work together. You look at this and say, our linebacking core is much improved from where it was last year. Our secondary, we got a great secondary. And so this may be a doomsday defense three. We'll see. Already good people. I got some work to do today. Who finally got that black toilet here? The third time was the charm from Amazon that it is not broken, and uh, we're gonna get that thing installed and do some tile work and some other things and all that, and you know, take care of business. And uh, I will see you guys soon. Peace out. Our folks here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Just one, and the only thing else I got to say is, how about